Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Rick Phillips for CampusNation.com, the Internet Sports Authority. We are here tonight, and uh, we have Cody Snyder is uh, in to do the play-by-play. Uh, -play. He did such a great job, even though no one could hear us yeah. <laughs> a couple <laughs> games ago during the, the Blue Lions game. But anyway, tonight we do have audio, and we'll check that several times just to make sure. Uh, but tonight, Zane Trace, they're in to play the, uh, the Miami Trace team. The Zane Trace Pioneers. Uh, Cody, have you got any information compiled on them? <laughs> well, from what I could find, they're sitting at 3-4 and four overall, but they're 3-0 and oh in the Scioto Valley Conference. Which is a tough conference. Yeah, absolutely. they got a lot of good teams in there. The Uniota, uh, Westfall's having a good year um, in the Scioto Valley Conference. Um, looks like it's uh, Zane Trace and Uniota at the top. Um, let me see if I can pull a schedule here, kind of see what teams they've played. Up until this point, they played Circleville, so a common opponent between them and Miami Trace. Right. Um, they lost that game 49 to 43. We um, feel their pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They uh, also another common opponent. Uh, Miami Trace played Uniota, I think, the second game of the season, uh, dropped one, and uh, Zane Trace actually beat them 49 to 46 in a close game. Um, so um, they've played Jackson. They lost to Jackson. They've also played Logan Elm. So they, these guys have probably had some good film on each other, so I'm probably going to anticipate a pretty good game tonight. Well, let's hope so. Yeah. We had a great game last week, or the last game, three nights ago. But unfortunately, we were on the short end of that stick. That was a that was a heartbreaker because we led it 17 by at the half or the halftime and then scored only five points going into that, uh, that second and final half. Uh, but... Uh, We've, we found that uh, that's been the case with that team. They have won most of their games by less than uh, five points. Yeah. So uh, Circleville, that is. So uh, uh, Zane Trace, uh, we'll see what they do tonight. Uh, they don't have a winning record. So maybe that's a positive thing for the uh, for the Panthers. But uh, any team can come back and bite you. So they don't want to take this team for granted. Well, looking at the Zane Tracer roster, I only I think I see two seniors here. Um, so, you know, maybe relatively young, getting some guys some experience, kind of going through some growing pains a little bit, and you'll have that. But um, to be at the top of uh, the SVC at this point, um, I'd say, I'd say they're, trying to, they're, they're starting to figure something out. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they come out and do tonight. Um, I know Trace um, – you know, you say a heartbreaking loss, lot. You know, the last game. I, you know, that's tough when you only come out and score five points in the entire second half. So I'm assuming that they got back to the drawing board at practice and tried to work some things out. And um, hopefully, they got it figured out. Um, at least the JV looked like they had it figured out uh, tonight. They had a great game before this one. And, um, and also the uh, the freshman team, both both posted wins. Uh, so we'll see what this game is going to turn out to be. But uh, uh, once again, head coach Ben is not here this evening. We wish him all well. Uh, he is recovering from that heart attack that he had. Uh, well, it's been, what, about 10 days ago? Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh, I guess it happened uh, after the Greenview game of the holiday tournament. Right. You know, we wish him the best. And, and we're sure that he's probably watching. Oh, yeah. Can't wait tonight's. to – what I can't wait for is to have him back on that bench back over there. And, exactly. You know, back at the helm. But, you know, we want you to get well first, Ben. And, That's right. You know, we're all thinking about you. And, and he brings a lot of energy, a lot of uh, positivity uh, to the game. So uh, he'll be back in no time. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, Ben has been around this community for a long time. He coached uh, girls basketball here at Miami Trace, had several successful runs. I want to say maybe one or two trips to the Final Four. Um, and, you know, he umpired baseball when I was playing, so that's kind of where I was introduced to him a little bit. And right. So I've known Ben for a long time. He also owns a successful detailing business here in town. Um, so he's, you know, a staple in our community, and, you know, we're all behind him, and, you know, we wish you the best, Ben. Yeah, get back soon. Yeah, in fact, Travis O'Connor, who was uh, our announcer with uh, Joe Davis in this last game with Circleville, uh, Travis said there would be no question if Ben was still coaching girls basketball, he would move here so that his daughter could play for him. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's a very talented coach. He knows his stuff. Been around the game a long time. Um, so pulled up the uh, FAC uh, standings right now. Miami Trace still at the top at 5-0. and um, I just saw Washington Courthouse lost a, a tough game, I believe, last night against Bishop Reedy, which is 
Um, a private school out of Columbus and right. typically are pretty tough in all sports they compete in. Um, so they hold a 5-0 and lead or 5-0 and record at the top of the standings with Courthouse coming in at 3-1. and um, But, you know, looking at these standings, it looks pretty competitive. I'm anxious to see what the second half of the FAC turns out to be. Um, anybody can be beat on any given night, Rick. Right, and we'll have all that on Campus Nation, both uh, boys and girls uh, Miami Trace uh, basketball, uh, the second half of the season going into the uh, first part of February. Yep, it's gonna be fun. Trace looking dialed in here. Uh, Zane Trace kind of cooling things off. Shoot around a little bit, get ready for the game. Got two minutes left until we tip off. Got some tall kids over there uh, yeah. for Trace Zane yeah. Trace that is yeah I, I guess we well, that's going to be hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> right uh. yep Zane Trace is a typically uh, is typically a pretty good basketball program I think either two years ago they had a really talented guard um, can't remember his name but I know that he did some damage when he was on the court and he was able to I believe they had a pretty deep postseason run maybe even had a district title I have to check my, my facts on that one but. Um, you know, I, you know, I love to see. I, I like how Trace has really uh, uh, designed their off uh, uh, non-conference schedule. They're not just picking teams that they can come in and, and roll over. They're scheduling teams that are, you know, historically good with deep programs, and you know, and it's only making them better in the long run. Since he's since Ben's taken over, you know, he, you know, he's brought it from the depths back into a competitive light. Right, um, right. Love to see it. Uh, we are just about ready to start. We're going to take a pause here for the National Anthem. You're listening to CampusNation.com, the Internet Sports Authority, Miami Trace Boys Basketball. Ready for the starting lineups here for first for Zane Trace. Looks like we got number five, Ezra Ripeth. Who's a junior. We got number 11, Brock Jarrell, who's a senior. We got number 15, Landon Robinson, junior. Number 23, Carter Langley, senior. Said they had two seniors on the team? Yeah, I believe so. Number 24, which is Gunnar McCullough, is a sophomore. Gary Cullough, the head coach of the Zane Trace Pioneers. Number 35, Bryson Osborne, senior for Miami Trace. And number 24, Austin Bodecker, senior. And 
And number 11, Brady Armstrong, another senior. We've got uh, number four, Colton May, another senior. And it looks like we're going to round it out with uh, Adam Guthrie, number 34, who's a sophomore. So four seniors and one sophomore for the Panthers. All right. We're ready to get the clock set. Teams are on the floor. We're ready for some basketball. Let's do this. Adam Guthrie right now is looking at some of the stats. He's closing in on 100 rebounds. He's sitting at 80 right now. Well, he's what? Uh well, he's, he's listed at 6'7", but I might, he might be maybe a little, a little taller than that. Right. Um, he just received an offer from Penn State for oh, football. Wow. Right. Um, he's got several Division I uh, football offers. He's a really big uh, statured kid and really talented on the basketball floor as well. Here we go, ready for the tip-off. Zane Trace gets the, uh, the basketball. we got number five, Ezra Ripeth. Bring the ball up to number 15, kicks it over to 11. Brock Jarrell, he finds 23, McCullough, puts it up off the mark, got three rebounds. There's a rebound. Osborne bringing the ball up to four for the Panthers. Drives to his right, kicks it down to Guthrie, who puts it up off the board, and it is off the mark. McCullough with a rebound. Ripeth bringing the ball up for the Pioneers. Osborne guarding Ripeth. Ripeth looking, working on Osborne, kicks it over to 15. Robinson, who brings it back to 11, Gerald. Gerald makes a shot off the glass, off the mark, but rebounded by Zane Trace. Stolen. And stolen by Bryson Osborne, who on a fast break, puts it up off the glass and in for two. Ripeth bringing the ball up the floor. Dribbles to his left. Finds McCullough, working on Guthrie. Fakes a uh, handoff there, puts it up off the glass and off the mark again, rebounded by uh, Brady Armstrong. He finds uh, Bo Decker, Bo Decker to Osborne, Osborne back. Kicks it down low to Guthrie. Guthrie working on McCullough, he puts it up and in for two. Two more. Four to nothing. That's probably gotta be a favorable matchup for Miami Trace right now. Right. Well, uh, McCullough's a tall kid, but you know, it's. It's hard to match up with a 6'7", six, 6'8", six, person. Right, and the girth and the width and the uh, power. <laughs> yep. Bodecker with the rebound, pushing the ball up the floor for the Panthers. Drives to his right, finds Brady Armstrong. Back to Bodecker. They kick it down low to Guthrie again, who makes a move, and oh, he's blocked. good block. Did not see who made the block there. Robinson with the basketball, kicks it back to McCullough. Or Langley, my apologies. Robinson. Goes to his right, gives it back to Ripeth. Ripeth drives, stops at the foul line, turns the ball over. Osborne on the fast break here by himself, feeds it to Armstrong. Armstrong goes up and off the glass. Two more. 6-0 run for the Panthers to start the game. Timeout. Zane Trace. Well, been a fast, fast open. Still trying to get the hang of reading the sheet and seeing the players. On the you're doing floor. a great job. <laughs> doing a great job. Easy for Trace. And, and you're not as annoying as Joe well. Davis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, old Joe. <laughs> Hope he's enjoying the weather down there in South yeah, Carolina. Yeah, sure came up for warmer. one day and then went back to South Carolina. 70 degrees, he says down there. So. Oh, that sounds nice. Sounds like baseball weather to me. It does. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll have to talk a little baseball maybe uh, at the half. Or, we'll or get that. some time. Uh, let's let's uh, get caught up on uh, Cedarville High School yeah. uh, boys basketball or boys uh, baseball. All right, Gerald inbounds the ball to number 15, Robinson, who gives it back to Gerald. Gerald pushing the ball up and then trades off to Ripeth. Ripeth to Gerald. Gerald dribbles to his left. Hesitates, finds Robinson. Robinson kicks it down to Langley. Langley back to Robinson. They got him trapped there. Puts it up off the glass and in. 
first two points there for uh, Zane Trace. It's a nice little move there to split the defenders. Osborne with the basketball for the Panthers. Ripeth guarding point. Trades it off to Bo Decker, who finds uh, Brady, Brady Armstrong, kicks it to Colton May. They get it down low to Guthrie, who makes a move, and nice up move. off the glass. Nice move. Looks like we're going to run the offense through Adam Guthrie tonight. Robinson with the basketball. Top of the key, finds number four, Houston, Noah Houston. Dribbles to his... Right, finds Langley. Langley looking around. Back to Ripeth who drives up and blocked by Guthrie. And who gets the rebound? Finds Bodecker. And they're off to the races again. Bodecker takes it up and fouled. He'll go to the stripe for two. Number 24, McCullough checking back into the game for the Zane Trace Pioneers. Bodecker to the strike to take his first. Up and in. Twelve for twenty-five on the year for free throws for Austin. Up with his second and in. Both are good. Eight point lead for the Panthers here in the opening quarter. Robinson with the basketball for Zane Trace getting the play from his bench. Working on Bo Decker, finds Gerald. Gerald to the top of the key, looking, finds Houston, back over to Robinson. Gets the ball to number 24, McCullough, who gives it back to Robinson. Looking for an outlet here. Houston, Robinson on the wing. Takes a three-pointer, oh. in and out. Tough one. In and out, had the space, good shot, just could not make it fall. Osborne to Bo Decker, Bo Decker looking. Swings it over to Armstrong. Back to Osborne. Kind of resetting here. Houston on point. Osborne dribbles to his left. Looking, looking. Kicks it to Bodecker who takes a three. Oh, off the rim. Rebound by Houston. So they called a foul on Adam Guthrie. It was a good shot look by Bo Decker, just couldn't make it fall. So we got Grant Guess and uh, Sky Salyers into the game for the Panthers. May and Armstrong coming off. 322 remaining in this first period of play. 10 to 2. Trace Panthers uh, in the lead. Robinson passes the corner for number 11. Gerald who misses a three. Guthrie with another rebound. Bodecker with the basketball, walking it up the floor for the Panthers. Setting the offense up. Working on Langley. Osborne finds Salyers. Salyers kicks it down low. Finds Bodecker Good in the backboard. Good pass. Good run by Trace right now. 12 to 2. Robinson with the basketball for the Pioneers. Dribbles to his right, kicks it over to Houston. Houston dribbles into the paint, floater, and oh, makes nice it. nice floater. Trace with some tempo. Osborne pushing the basketball, gives it to Guest. Guest kicks it over to Bodecker. Bodecker finds Salyers over to Guest. Guest gets it down low again. Guthrie oh, with another two. He is unstoppable. Guthrie with six up in, already in the opening quarter. Robinson with the basketball for uh, the St. Trace Pioneers. Kicks it over to Gerald. Gerald dribbles to his left. Little hesitation there. Back over to Robinson. Robinson to Langley. Robinson with the basketball again. Over to McKella, who has a lot of space. Kind of asking him to shoot the basketball. He drives into the paint, puts it up with the left and in. 14 to six now, Miami Trace lead. Guess with the basketball. Guest dribbles to his left, finds Salyers, kicks it over to Osborne, who takes a deep three off the, front of the, off the front of the rim. 
Comes Langley. Langley over to, oh, travel. Gerald caught the basketball, took one too many steps. St. Trace moving the ball well. Just cannot get things to fall right now. It's like they're a little out of rhythm. Guess with the basketball for the Panthers. Dribbles to his right, into the paint, finds Robinette, who loses handle on it, and it's Zane Trace basketball. May back in for the Panthers. Giving Adam Guthrie a quick blow here. I'm assuming he's going to be back in the game pretty soon. Robinson inbounds the ball to Gerald. Back to Robinson. I think Zane Trace is trying to slow things down. Zane works to his right. Finds Langley, who rips it away from Armstrong. Jump ball. But a jump ball. That's a good play by uh, Armstrong there. It's like Ripeth back into the back into the game for Zane Trace for number 23, Carter Langley. So they just now realize that it goes back to Miami Trace. Yeah. I was going to say, Armstrong was standing down here by himself. He finally figured it out. Armstrong with the basketball, gives it back to Robinette. He finds uh, Salyers. Salyers kicks it over and inter intercepted by Houston for Zane Trace. He dribbles, looks, finds Ripeth. Ripeth looking. Kicks it to Robinson over to Gerald. Gerald to the top of the key here. Dribbles to his right, kicks it out. Oh, loses the handle on it. Salyers has got him boxed into the corner. Ripeth. Robinson with the basketball at the top. Sky Salyers guarding. He drives, loses the handle. We got a foul. Foul is on Brady Armstrong for the Panthers. Zane Trace in, inbound the basketball. Tipped by a Panther. Looked a little congested. Robinson with the basketball. Kicks it over to Ripeth. Ripeth looking. Finds Robinson at the wing. Guess guarding. Set a screen. He dribbles to the top. Takes a three. Gets Good. it. Comes Guess. A long shot over the backboard. Almost took out a cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dangerous zone down there. If you remember the old gym, there wasn't much room on either side. No, there wasn't. Um, well, good first opening quarter for the Panthers. 14-9 lead right now. Uh, Adam Guthrie really going to work um, in the paint. Several rebounds, several moves. See if they can keep that rhythm going. You know, with Coach Ackley being out, I love to see the collective effort from the from the Trace coaching staff right now. Right, they're all pitching in. All, everyone's pitching in. Um, that's, that's a sign of a good staff, everybody being on the same page. And, of course, Brian Southward being the floor coach for the Panthers while uh, Coach Ackley is out. I would say he is just as animated as Ben. <laughs> he <laughs> likes to stomp his foot and make sure he's heard. Right. Well, it, uh, next next quarter now, second period of play. Uh, Panthers ahead 14-9 to nine over the uh, Pioneers. Got Armstrong, Osborne, Robinette, May, and Guthrie on the floor for the Panthers. Gerald to inbound the basketball for the Pioneers to start the second. Finds Robinson who hands it off to Ripeth. Ripeth. Bringing the ball up to the left side. He's looking. Dribbles to his right. Finds Gerald, who takes a deep three off the mark. Houston with the rebound. Kicks it back to Ripeth, but taken from Osborne. Osborne on a fast break here. Up off the glass for two. Great heads up play by Bryson Osborne. Extend the Panther lead 16 to 9. 
Ripith with the basketball. Osborne guarding Ripith, kicks it over to Houston. Robinette, oh, almost lost his footing, takes a deep three, in and out. Guthrie with the lead rebound, finds Osborne, who slows it down just a little bit. Osborne hands off to Robinette. Robinette finds Armstrong. Armstrong over to May. He kicks it down low to Guthrie. Pump fakes up off the glass and in. They, they do not have they, an answer for no, him right they, now. They cannot stop him. It's like Langley coming back into the game for the Pioneers. And Robinson throws the ball away. Miami Trace basketball. Yeah, still a little bit out of sync. I don't know whether it's well, because when they they're hit trying the to – hurry things? Yeah, or? They, they hit the three and I like the movement that they had so I figured they were going to feed off that but still kind of stalling possessions here. Miami Trace has had some key turnovers. Bryson Osborne with a couple fast breaks. Osborne with the basketball now for the Panthers. Kicks it to Robinette. Robinette looks, looks, finds Guthrie at the top. Back to Osborne over to Armstrong. Armstrong to May. May looking. Back to Armstrong. The reset in here. Gets it to Guthrie. Finds Armstrong for a deep three and off the mark. Robinson with the rebound for Zane Trace. It gets it to River. It's like McCullough coming back into the game for Zane Trace with Bodecker and Guess. Uh, Gerald with the basketball. Finds Robinson. Robinson working on May. Dribbles to his right. Feeds it to, oh, we lost the handle. Trace with the basketball. Osborne pushing. Finds May in the corner who takes a three. Hits got it, it. Got it. Told him May. Comes Robinson again for uh, Zane Trace. Dribbles to his left. Finds Gerald who takes another deep three. In and out. Man, they just cannot get anything to fall. No, it's like there's a lid on the basket. Man. Ripeth looking, loses the handle. Osborne dives for it, gets the basketball, loses it again. Got to be a jump ball. Did you get a jump ball call there? Guys tangled up on the floor. It's either that or travel. Didn't see if he – looks like a jump ball. Little substitution confusion there for Trace, but they got to figure it out. Bodecker inbounds the ball to Osborne. Dribbling up the far side. Hands off to Bodecker. Bodecker looks, finds Armstrong over on the wing. Back to Guess at the top. Down low to Guthrie again. Zane Trace kind of closing in on him. He makes a spin move and up off the rim. But Guess is able to get the rebound and draw the foul there. Okay. He'll go to the stripe for two. I guess right now it's 22 for 28 with the stripe this year. 22 for 29. Pretty efficient. I'm going to have to ask him about those shoes, though. Those look brand new, and they've got all kinds of collars on them. <laughs> you got to oh, get man. you a pair. If you ever get a chance, you got to talk to Grant Guess. He's a, he's a great kid, but he's pretty interesting. I'll put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Loves a smile. Always looking to have have some fun and a good time. Great kid. Turn over. All right. Bo Decker into Osborne. 21 to 9. Panther lead just here before the half. Os or Armstrong, rather. Over to Guthrie. Guthrie finds Guess who dribbles back to the top. Finds Osborne. Osborne to Guthrie, hands it off to Bodecker, who drives, is denied. Armstrong at the top, kicks it over to Guess, who feeds it down low to Guthrie again, who goes up and is fouled. Trace has pretty much forced Zane Trace to abandon everything when that man has the basketball. Right. And Four out of the five came down crashing on him there. And you have to. If not, he's going to kill you. Guthrie up, off the mark, for, shoot another here. Yeah. 
Osborne talking to Guthrie there. Guthrie's usually a very good free throw shooter. Gets a second. So like, hey, man, deep breath. He got the next one. And he hit it. Griffith with the basketball for the Pioneers. Looking. Finds McCullough, who's working on gas. Goes up and is fouled. See if Zane Trace can make a little headway here at the, at the charity stripe. Well, at least it stops the clock and gives them the ability to put a couple points on the board without uh, using up any more time. Yep. Looks like number four, Noah Houston, coming back into the game for the Pioneers. And another one that just is starting to fall and it just comes right out. Nope, they haven't figured that rim out. I think the referee is noticing it too. He just tried to get that kid to smile. So, yeah, just relax, buddy. Call it with his second. Got it. 22 to 10. 22 to 10. With a full, full court pressure here from the Pioneers. See if they can disrupt that Panther offense a little bit. Bryson Osborne with the basketball. Dribbles to his left, finds Guess. Guess looking. Drives. Off the mark. Guthrie with the rebound, who puts it back up and in. Guthrie's 11th point of the first half. He's definitely taken command this first oh, half. Oh, yeah. Guthrie up. Oh, off the back with Osborne rebounds. Finds Armstrong, who takes a three. Get Ooh, air ball. It's a little uncharacteristic for Brady. <laughs> but he's smiling. He's all right. I'm sure that's not going to be the last shot he takes tonight. <laughs> Ripeth with the basketball. Setting his offense up. Looking. Passes over to Houston. Houston's looking on the wing here. Dribbles to his right. Kind of in trouble there. Gets it off to McCullough. McCullough looking. Who gives it to Ripeth, who loses the handle. Another turnover. Bodecker with the basketball. Jump ball. He felt that he was fouled, and he got hit in the back of the head, but it wasn't purposeful. But Zane Trace. Still hurts. Oh, yeah. I'm sure that doesn't feel good. Zane Trace gets the ball back here. Houston looking. Finds McCullough. Gives it over to Langley there. Kicks it back to Robinson. Robinson dribbles on the wing. Backs off a little bit to reset the offense. Dribbles to his right. Step back. McCullough with the basketball on the wing. Pump fake. Gets down to the baseline. He's kind of swarmed there. Gets it out to Houston. who loses the handle. And yet another turnover for the Pioneers. They cannot buy a break. No. No, they can't. Trace looking to set up something here. Zane Trace adding a little pressure. Guess with the basketball. Houston Garden. He feeds it to Guthrie. He's looking. Back to Guess. Slowing things down a little bit. Guess finds Guthrie. Guthrie looking. Kind of by himself. Bo Decker. Bo Decker to Guess. Guess on the wing. Houston Garden. Over to Salyer. Salyers gets it down low to Guthrie. Loses the handle, but gets it back. Finds Guess. Guess driving baseline. Kicks it back to Salyers, who takes a three. Got, Got it. it. Nice movement. 27-10. So tell two teams right now. One team that doesn't matter what they do, everything's falling. Right. And the other team, can't they can't get in. Can't buy a break. Yeah. Looks like we're calling a foul here. Foul on Sky Salyers. Robinson looking to inbound the basketball for the Pioneers. Over to Houston. Osborne guarding pretty close. So Trey sitting in the zone right now. Houston over to Ripeth. Ripeth all the way across to Robinson who takes a shot. He got, got it. that one. Finally. Maybe they opened up the lid. 
A minute 50 left here in the first half. Bodecker driving. Slows it down, sets a screen. Gives it to Guthrie who loses the handle. It was saved by McCullough. Robinson with the basketball now. A minute and a half left here in the first half. Finds Houston in the corner. Houston dribbles out, gives it to Langley, takes a three. Got, Got it. it. All right. Now they're a little working on something here. Got a nine point lead. Miami Trace. Here comes Guess. Guess working on Houston. Osborne sets a screen. Guess kicks to Guthrie for a mid range. In and out. Saved by Osborne. Ball's on the floor. Jump on. Oh, Jump. Guthrie got it out. Kept it alive. Salyers. Yep. He's fouled. What an interesting uh, sequence there. Robinson. Foul. His third foul of the first half. That's to come out. That's tough. Cool your heels. Gerald back into the game for the Pioneers. Osborne to Guthrie. Guthrie looking, finds May. May kicks to Osborne, who dribbles to his right. Finds Guthrie. Guthrie working. And is <laughs> swallowed. <laughs> Man. Say, they <laughs> collapse on him the minute he's got the ball. Have to. You have to. Zane Trace digging into the bench a little bit. It's like Sebastian Ray coming in. His first shot good. Ray in for Carter Langley. 44.2 seconds in this first half of play. Guthrie with a second, hits it. 29 to 16. Miami Trace leads with 42 seconds left in the first half. Ripeth driving the basketball down the court. Looks, finds Jarrell. Jarrell kicks it to Houston who takes a three. Short, Guthrie with the rebound. Osborne driving the ball up the court. Osborne looking, hands the, well, probably go for the last shot. There. Oh, travel? Or a foul? No, oh, foul. 35. Oh, yeah. Hand to the face. I must have missed it. Bo Decker's coming in for Guthrie. Looks like Gerald to inbound the basketball for the Pioneers. Right in front of us. Yep. Gives it to Ripeth. Ripeth going to his right. Cuts back to the left. Finds Houston. Houston bringing it back around. Makes a nice move to Ripeth. Ripeth. Yeah, that Trey's defense right now. And blocked by Guest. Who, that would have been a pretty sweet basket. If he would have made that. that. Been, yeah. Guest blocks the shot. It ends up into the hands of number 24, Gunnar McCullough. And he puts it up just short. So at the half, it's 29 to 16. The Panthers lead the Pioneers. Well, again. Zane Trace with some early struggles, can't get the ball to fall. Miami Trace just seems like they're getting every shot they want. Uh, Guthrie working pretty well down low on whoever is on him. Um, Zane Trace made an adjustment there towards the end of the second half, and they just said, well, you know what? When he gets the basketball, we're going to collapse on you, and it is what it is at that point. Um, it's a good problem to have if you're Miami Trace because then you're going to get a guy that, that makes a lot of his free throws to this charity stripe. Um, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments are made on, on the Zane Trace side. Right. If you're Miami Trace, you got to be thinking, man, we cannot have a second half like we did against Circleville. No, that's for sure. And I'm sure they're being reminded of that when they go into the locker room. 100%. I think the mindset's got to be we got to hit the pedal to the metal and continue what we've been working on up until this point. Um, I'm sure that's the conversation. Right. Miami Trace cheerleaders at halftime. So 
So speaking of baseball, <laughs> Cedarville baseball, to be exact, uh, which you are head coach. You say you almost uh, think you might have a second team, a, J yeah. a JV team. Yeah, sure. we're, uh, we're our numbers are looking pretty good. Uh, last year I was able to start a, uh, a middle school program, which Cedarville hadn't had up until this point. Right. Um, and a big eighth grade class is coming, or they're, they're freshmen now. Um, and, you know, it's it's given us the numbers that we, that we need to be able to, you know, in the beginning we were like, okay, can we do this? And then, okay, so we started counting numbers. Like, oh, yeah, we can make this work. Because um, before I was running a 20-man roster, which for our younger guys, if you're a freshman in our program, it's, it's tough. So super important that we were able to get this second team together. And, and I'll know more once we, you know, once we get closer. But right now it's trending the right direction. Um, still on the hunt for a JV coach. But I got a couple prospects out there, so hopefully I can get that uh, shored up. And So as far as schedule, when is the first home game? Um, I was just going to pull that up for you. I believe it's uh, – we actually opened up with Washington Courthouse for a scrimmage on the 9th. Um, but our first official home game is going to be – March 23rd, and we open up with Miami East. And are there any uh, games that are going to be played like at the uh, University of Cincinnati or anything like that? Uh, this year we were able to get uh, Wright State uh, University. Okay. We're going to play Covington High School there. All right. Um, My alma mater. You went to Covington? No, I went to oh, Wright State. Wright State, okay. Very funny there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we are you know was able to get a hold of their AD, and they were looking to, for a neutral site game, and the opportunity – presented itself and I'm like of course I always think it's important to you know especially in baseball to you know get these guys into different you know venues especially when they're available if Wright State's on a big road you know road stint and right. Wright State's got a decent facility and Wright State has always been very good in baseball oh yeah we have a great program there um, and then we got it we're, we're going back to the VA Memorial Stadium and we're going to play White Oak who was a, a regional finalist last year uh, their head coach is actually being a uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame, the Ohio High School uh, Baseball Coaches Association, Chris Veit. Um, so that that should be a good game. Um, I really look to to beef up the schedule this year. We got a big senior class, uh, and as you saw last year, our conference is just it is brutal. It is. It is brutal. There's no question about that. We had uh, two district champions in our side of the the conference. Um, we had another team that made the district championship. It's every every night we're we're facing a one or a two and it's tough. Yeah, but you can't catch your breath. No, you can't. Um, and you know, like coming from here, it's a little bit smaller conference, but bigger schools. Um, and I thought you know this was tough, so I was like, you know what? My thought process was a smaller school, might be a little breathing room, but man, I was wrong. My first year, I was shell shocked, but <laughs> thrown into the. Thrown, fire. Yeah, the thrown to the fire. fire. Yeah. It really makes you consider your pitching. You gotta, you gotta make sure you manage that as best as you can. And um, but you know, I, I love the competitiveness of it. Every night is a game that matters. Um, and the kids, you know, they love it. So who are, you've got seniors coming back? Oh yeah, I got a bunch of seniors this year. Um, I think I, I want to say eight returning, um, and I want to say roughly six to seven of those guys. Have, had already got a substantial amount of playing time. Right. So we got a lot of veteran leadership coming back. Um, we got a couple guys signing college letters of intent. We got Mason Johnson. He's going to go to Tiffin, which is a Division II school. I got James Dre, who, who just signed with the JUCO school, Kent State Tuscawars. Um, they play, um, you know, JUCO base, baseball, but it's, you know, it's, they're in the, they're in there with Miami Hamilton, who was a perennial power in JUCO uh -huh. in Ohio, uh -huh. um, and then uh, Jake Winter, who was one of our best pitchers last year and best hitter. Um, he is looking at Cedarville University, which is another D Division II school, and he's got a couple. Imagine other, that. Yeah, he's got a couple <laughs> other offers on the table. So, you know, we we've really got some talent, and um, I can't wait to use it. I'm ready for baseball. I'm ready to get these guys out. We're there all go. ready for baseball. <laughs> we are ready. <laughs> Just, I always look for the uh, French Open, which is in uh, in February. Once we get past the French Open, as far as tennis, oh, yeah. then I know that spring is not far behind. Yeah. Our first official start date is going to be February 19th. I've got just about everything tied away. We're ready to go. 
was new, able to, new was, unis. Yeah, we was able to get the boys some new uniforms this year. Um, you know, it's you know it helps create excitement. Oh yeah. Um, especially for our seniors who they had had the same uniforms since their freshman year. And right. And you've got a beautiful facility there. Oh, I, always well man, manicured oh. and just really a nice, nice facility. For my first opportunity as a head coach, I could not have asked for a better place to be. Um, from the administration to the guys that you know help me take care of the facilities, they they welcome me with open arms. And the, the athletic director Glenn Satchel was actually a, a alumni from Miami Trace, right. so it was. And I didn't know that, so when I applied for it, you know, he called me. He said, "You went to Miami Trace," and I was like, "Yeah," because well, I did too back in the '80s, but. <laughs> I was like, well, I kind of perked up. I was like, well, maybe I got a shot here. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, they gave me the opportunity. I'm forever grateful. And, um, top, you know, top-notch facilities. The, the baseball field when I got there I think was only three to four years old. And, um, you know, it's it's a great place, man. I love, I love it. Well, um, Campus Nation definitely enjoys doing games there. And we'll be supporting you again this uh, baseball season. So, Love to have you guys there. Yeah. Well, it's good to have you here on our broadcast <laughs> of basketball. Yeah, yeah. And you did our football broadcast. Yeah, I did some football times. this year. Yeah. Uh, a man of many talents. Well, a master of none, though. <laughs> <laughs> a master of none. Uh, both teams back onto the court here for the start of the second half. Um, and what we got up on the board here, uh, looks like Adam Guthrie is the leading scorer for, scorer for Trace with 13 in the first half, multiple rebounds. Um, and that's exactly the lead that Trace has, uh, well, that, that Miami Trace has on Zane Trace. Yeah, that's got to be due to that man, Adam Guthrie. <laughs> um, Osborne with a couple uh, hustle plays, some fast breaks, able to bring it home for us. Um, it's been a good game. But I'm interested to see how they come out in the second half. Especially this third quarter, because yeah. what happened last game uh, was Cedarville was able to come out and score some very quick baskets. And that sort of turned the tide. It gave them some hope that they could come back, and they certainly did that. Yep. It's important to grab that second half momentum, um, kind of set the tone for the rest of the game. And exactly. See what, see what they come out and do. Collecting all the basketballs. So I got one too many there. <laughs> There's a man of many, many talents, athletic director Aaron Hammond. I don't know how he has time to sleep. And, and, and that, you know, you probably, well, I don't know. You probably would never want to be an athletic director. Oh, man. They have to attend, you know, all the events. They, they're, they're going to multiple events. On, on the same day. Yeah. Um, I know from Troy Deals over at Wilmington, same way, you know, they work and they earn every cent, whatever it is that they're making. Yeah. But I know Aaron, he, we go back many, many years. Campus Nation uh, has done uh, a lot of Miami Trace uh, games, whether it's football or basketball, or and Aaron's always been a great guy to work with. Yep. He's got, he's got a real, you know, a good support system too with our administration. They come on. You'll see both principals, uh, Ryan Davis and Brian Sheets at events. Um, Mike Bernard, who is a, uh, a teacher at Miami Trace, who is also the assistant athletic director. So they're able to spread things out. And Because um, when you got multiple teams going to multiple places, can't be in multiple places at once. That's so. true. And you talk <laughs> about great facilities. This campus at Miami Trace is second to none. Oh, man. Oh, turnover there for the Panthers. Robinson driving. Osborne is able to get his hand in there, but he retains the basketball. Ripeth up short it looks like McCullough is able to get the rebound puts it back up and is fouled right it's like the foul on on number 34 Adam Guthrie his second another thing for Adam is the games that I've done in the past or I've seen sometimes he can get into a little bit of foul trouble in the first half it kind of limits his game um, you know going forward but tonight he's he's done really well um, only his second foul. Bodecker with the basketball here. The call up pressuring. Is able to create another turnover. He makes a move up and in. This is not what we want to see. Oh, no. quick timeout from Southward. You talk about uh, deja vu. This is exactly uh, the Cedarville game 
or the uh, Circle, Circleville game, Circleville, yeah. they came out and they scored several quick points. We don't want to see this. And we certainly don't want to give any fodder for these guys thinking back to that game. It's like Coach Smallwood stepping in there, trying to settle his guys down. Um, kind of flat there in the first couple of possessions. Well, um, and you wonder if in the back of their mind they were thinking about yeah, I, Circleville. They need to just clear their minds and go forward a, like a, they a did. A quick that refocus first here and, and get back to it. Adam Guthrie inbound the basketball. Finds Bodecker. Bodecker to Guthrie. So some pressure here oh by boy. St. Trace. I'm not sure this is what Trace wants to do. Finds May. Back to Guthrie. Guthrie gets to Osborne. Osborne to his right. Finds May. May gets it back down low to Guthrie, who dribbles. Got to travel. Third consecutive turnover on three possessions for Trace. Kind of see the guys communicating with each other, like, all right, let's settle down here. Rippeth with the basketball. Working on Osborne, setting up the offense. Finds Robinson on the wing. Bodecker on Robinson, who finds uh, McCullough, who dribbles to his right. Kicks it back out, but turns it over. Take it away. Bodecker pushing. Floats it, gets Good. it. Good. Needed that. Yep. Ten point lead for the Panthers, 31 to 21. Six minutes, 35 seconds left here in the, the third quarter. Ripeth for Zane Trace finds uh, who is that? Takes a deep three and misses it. May with the rebound, but is able to find Osborne, who goes up and off the glass. That was Gerald for Zane Trace. So couldn't Zane uh, Trace takes a timeout. They don't want to uh, give back what they got in the first part of the second half of the. Gunnar McKellar for Zane Trace has really come out with some fire here in the second half. A couple of big plays, a couple of hustle plays. Um, they're putting a little bit of pressure on Trace uh, with some full court uh, press there. But that fourth time down, Trace was able to navigate through it and get the ball in the hands of you know, the guy that they want so that way he can set up the offense and they can go. Yeah, and I don't think that um, Miami Trace sees that kind of pressure that often in bringing the ball in, inbounding it, and bringing it down the floor. So Zane Trace may give that up after a few successful uh, inbounds and, and bringing it down the floor. I don't think they're going to do that the whole second half here. All right. Looks like Gerald to inbound the basketball. Bodecker on Robinson. He gives it back to Gerald. Gerald to Ripeth. Ripeth bringing it up past midcourt here. Working on Bryson Osborne. Dribbles to his left. Finds Robinson. Robinson looking. Gets it to McCullough, who puts up a mid-range and off the back of the rim. No good. Osborne rebounds. Finds some space here. Kind of pushing. Gets the ball to Armstrong in the corner, who throws it back across to Bodecker. Drives the lane, goes up, and off the mark. Scuffle for the ball. Didn't see the call. It looked like he indicated it's coming back the other way. I don't know what the call actually was unless... Uh, Must have went out of bounds. Yeah, it could have been Guthrie touched the ball out of bounds. Ripeth with the basketball for the Pioneers. Looking, dribbles to his left on the wing, kicks it back to Langley. Langley looking over to Gerald. Gerald dribbles to the top. Guthrie on Gerald. Finds Robinson. Robinson to McCullough, who dribbles to his right. Loses awesome. the handle off his leg. Miami Trace basketball. Guthrie to inbound the basketball for the Panthers. Still pressure. Bodecker back to Guthrie. Guthrie looking. He's got to pick to Osborne. Osborne gets a pass midcourt. Down low to Guthrie. He puts it on the floor. Up and in for an and one. Yeah. 
Foul on number 23, Carter Langley. It's fourth foul. Houston coming in for him. It's a tall task for, for Langley. That's right. He's trying to shut Guthrie down. It's just not possible. Guthrie with his first, or his only, misses it. Robinson to Ripeth. Ripeth looking, finds Houston in the corner. Houston puts up a three, in and out again. Bodecker with the basketball, pushing up the left side here. To Armstrong, Armstrong puts up a mid-range. Nice shot, it. that was nice. 37-21. Robinson with the basketball. Working on Bodecker over to Houston. Double team. Finds McCullough who puts it in. 37-23. Full court pressure here from Zane Trace. Over to Bodecker. Bodecker kicks it to the middle. Finds May who takes it up and oh, oh he misses. And the follow-up is. Tough break there for May. Robinson finds Ripeth for two. And we're going to see more of that pressure, I'm sure. Here they go again. Finds Armstrong. Armstrong looking. Gets it to Ar Osborne, who dribbles. Feeds the Bodecker and in. in. Ripeth with the basketball. Kind of slowing things down on their end here. Over to Robinson. Robinson to Ripeth. Ripeth to Robinson on the wing. Backs off just a little bit. Dribbles to his left. Bodecker guarding close. Finds McCullough who drives. Kicks it out to Ripeth who thinks about a three but pulls it. Gives it to McCullough who misses. Ripeth with the rebound. Misses again. Guthrie with the board. Turnover by Trace. Gerald driving. Stops for mid-range. Misses. Bodecker with the board. Austin pushing. Finds Armstrong in the corner. Who, stripped by Osborne who puts it up Punch and in. in. That ball looked like it was going in from the three. Ripeth with the basketball. Dribbles to his left. Finds Robinson who puts up a three ball. Good. Got it. 41 to 28, 237 left in the third quarter. Zane Trey sticking with the pressure here. Armstrong to Osborne who gets a lane. Throws the ball, finds Guthrie. Back to, to Osborne here. Bodecker short. Kicks it up to Ripeth. Ripeth. Thinks about a three, gives it to McCullough. Cannot get the roll. Zane Trace is getting some high percentage looks. They just can't get the ball to fall in the hoop. Right, right. It's not, it's not happening. Osborne to Bodecker. Bodecker to Armstrong. Armstrong finds May. There's plenty of room. Armstrong dribbles to his right. Mid-range. Off the front of the rim. Rebound by Bodecker who takes it up and, and in. Good. Got another timeout. Ten points for Austin Bodecker. Just when Zane Trace starts to show a glimmer of hope, they go back to not getting anything to fall. One. Trying to figure out what kind of timeout. 30-second timeout. Yeah, because it doesn't actually show. No, it's a 30-second now. 144 remaining. In the third period. 43-28 lead for the Panthers. Looks like Guthrie guesses in the game. Robinette, Salyers, and I'm assuming Osborne getting a quick drink there. Ripeth, Robinson, Houston, Gerald, and McCullough for the Pioneers. Pioneers. 
student section for Trace looks a little calm tonight. And there's not quite as many <laughs> students there. And, of course, the band is uh, out for their break or whatever. Ripeth with the basketball. Trace kind of giving a little bit of pressure on their own, of their own, rather. Ripeth with the basketball. Finds Gerald. Robinette guarding closely. Gerald finds Ripeth. Ripeth to Robinson, who puts up a three. And oh, gets it went in. What an arc. They finally got the roll. 43 31. That is 14 points for Robinson. Osborne over to Guess. Guess. Looks like they're trying to trap him here. Over to Osborne. Osborne finds Robinette. Robinette looking, looking. Long pass over to Guess. He fakes. Goes to Osborne. Trey slowing it down just a little bit here. Probably trying to take the last shot of this uh, period. 49 seconds. Robinette in the corner finds Osborne. Kicks it to Salyers, who swings it over to Robinette. Guess in the corner. Robinette with the basketball finds Osborne back to Guess. Guess to Salyers. Yep, they're trying to kill some time here. Oh, oh back in his. Ah. Uh, oh. Well, almost a turnover, but Guess was able to get a handle on it and then tries a quick pass to Guthrie, and Guthrie just missed it. Here comes Ro Robinson for Zane Trace. Guess guarding. Robinson. Salyer's now guarding. Kicks it to Gerald. Dribbles to his left. Underneath to Houston, who Good gets play. the bucket. Oh, almost traveled there, but finds Salyers. He goes up and gets it. That's going to be the last uh, play of the third quarter. So a little bit of life for Zane Trace. They were able to get some things to fall. Still struggling just a little bit. And, uh, Miami Trace comes out just a little bit flat, but gets things worked out. and He's able to get some, some points on the board. Yeah, Zane Trace had only shaved one point since half. So... Uh, 12-point lead instead of the 13-point lead at the half that uh, Miami Trace had. 45-33. Ready to go for the fourth quarter. All right. Is any Trace Pioneer of cheerleaders on the floor? Got a lot of cheerleaders out for Zane, Zane Trace. They do, they do. Looks like about 20. <laughs> Sign of a good program. Yeah. Gerald Houston looks like Langley, Ripeth, and Robinson on the floor for the Pioneers to start the fourth. We got Armstrong, Bodecker, Robinette, Salyers, Sow and Guess. Let's see who's inbounding the bat. Oh, it looks like Gerald. Gerald to Ripeth. Setting the offense up for the Pioneers. Little confusion there, but they get it going. Over to Gerald, who takes a deep three Short. off the front. Guess with the board, who's pushing the ball for the Panthers. Over to Bodecker, Bodecker looking. Puts the ball on the floor. Over to Armstrong, Armstrong. Over to Guess, Guess on the wing here. He's able to get it down low for Bodecker, up in. and in. 12 points for Bodecker. Gerald with the basketball. Working on Salyers. Salyers guarding close over to Ripeth who thinks about a three. Guess switches off on Ripeth. Ripeth drives. And we got a foul. Foul on Grant Guess. His second. Gerald. Not much movement here. Finds Langley. Langley. Gets the ball back to Gerald. Time. Timeout, Zane Trace. Full timeout. 
47-33 lead. Looks like the band's back up playing again. Pretty good crowd here for a Saturday night basketball game. It is a good crowd. On both sides. And especially Zane Trace, about an hour away. Yeah, they, uh, uh, they travel well. Yeah. They travel really well. For those of you are, that are not familiar where Zane Trace is, Ross County, in the uh, Chillicothe area. One of many schools in the Chillicothe area. Yeah. We got Chillicothe, Uniota, Zane Trace, Huntington, Southeastern. I think that's it. It's Paint Valley close. That's Bainbridge. Yeah. Yeah, that's Bainbridge. Pioneers are bringing in. Gerald looking, gets the ball to Langley. Langley to Rippeth, Rippeth setting up the offense. Looking, gets to Langley, Langley, working on Salyers. A switch off there. Rippeth with the basketball again, dribbles to his left, Armstrong guarding tight. Gerald with the basketball, over to Houston, Houston. Good defense from the Panthers here. Robinson with the basketball. Finds Ripeth. Bodecker guarding tight. Three. Three by Gerald. The lead, cut the lead to 11 there. Bodecker inbounds, inbounds to Armstrong who gives it back to Bodecker. Robinette with the basketball. Finds Guess on a long run there. Uh, now we give it ah, he misses the layup. It's, it's nice to have the quarterback on your basketball team, so you need those long passes. Right. <laughs> Trey Robinette, of course, the quarterback for the Miami Trace Panthers football team. Robinette with the basketball for the Panthers, who gives it to Guess. Closing in on Guess. Trying to find an outlet back to Robinette. Robinette to Guess, Guess working, finds Bodecker. Bodecker, who drives, kicks the ball to Armstrong. Armstrong gives it to Salyers, swings it to Robinette. Robinette working on Ripeth. Armstrong to Bodecker. Robinette back with the basketball, finds Salyers, who gets it down low to Bodecker, who kicks it to Armstrong for a wide open three and he misses. Rebound Zane Trace, Gerald pushing the basketball. Armstrong able to get a hand on that ball. It's like uh, Guthrie, May, and Osborne back into the game for the Panthers. Robinette, Armstrong, and Salyers coming off. Gerald to inbound the basketball for the Pioneers. Finds Ripeth, Osborne guarding tightly, gets a hand on the basketball. Robinson. Stripped by Guthrie, who goes on a fast break here. Look at the big man go. And what do you know? Up. Gerald on the wing, who drives, kicks it to Houston, who takes a three, gets it. Right. Timeout, Zane Trace. Count an eight point lead. Okay, starting to close the gap a little bit here. Interesting to see if, if Trace slows down just a little bit, try to kill some time. Full timeout. You're listening to CampusNation.com, the Internet Sports Authority. Don't forget. If you're watching us on YouTube, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel of Campus Nation.
Coach for Zane Trace drawing up something on the whiteboard. Trace is going to come out with the same set. Well, one thing's for sure, I can tell you right now, with four whatever remaining, Trace will win this game. It's <laughs> a bold prediction there, Rick. Isn't that bold? Very bold. Bodecker going to the baseline to inbound for Miami Trace. Pressure's on. Full court pressure. Guess with the basketball. Giving him a little room. Looks like they're going with a trap here. Nice play by McCullough. And it worked. Finds Houston in the corner. It looks that was like. A foul. He was over his back. Ooh. No, he did. I don't think he called the foul. You don't think he called no, it? No, he said. From where I sit, it looked like Austin Bodecker had the last hand on that basketball. But again, I am not an official. Osborne. Zane Trace looking to trap. Finds May. May going up and in. And that will happen. 51-41, 10-point lead. Gerald to Robinson. What is this? He literally had his arm around his neck. <laughs> Guess trying to explain. Yeah, he wasn't. I don't think there was anything vicious, but. St. Trace faithful, not very happy about that. <laughs> oh, they want him to throw it out. It didn't look that malicious. Well, we didn't even get a technical. No. I think they just got tied up. Anyway, you can run that back on the replay, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Robinson with a three, hits it. All right, maybe a little momentum here for the Pioneers. Crowd coming in alive. Osborne with the basketball for Miami Trace. Finds uh, Bo Decker in the corner. Back to Osborne. Osborne gives it to Guthrie, who's working. Offensive foul. A little elbow action there, I think. It was the right call. 51 to 44. Zane Trace will have the ball. Ripeth. Setting up the offense here. A little over three minutes left in the game. Robinson drives, loses the handle, but it's out on Miami Trace. Nice hustle by May to try to keep that ball alive. Southward. Oh, nice inbound pass and in for McCullough. Having a pretty decent game. That's his 12th point. Osborne looking, they're looking to trap again. They find Bodecker. Bodecker dribbles to his left. Kind of resets the offense here. Five point Panther lead. Dribbles to his right, hands off to Osborne. Osborne stops and hits Got a it. mid range. 10 points for Osborne. Gerald. Finds McCullough again, who loses the handle, but is out of bounds. Yeah, he literally sat down with the ball. He did. Armstrong back into the game for the Panthers. In for Guess. 2.23 remaining in this fourth period and second half of play. Bryson Osborne with the basketball. Finds Bodecker, Bodecker. Back to Osborne, they're slowing the pace down a little bit here, try to get some time off that clock. Almost just inside two minutes here. May hands it off to Bodecker, Bodecker swings it to Osborne, who finds Armstrong. 
Armstrong to May. May, oh, hustle play by Ripeth. He loses the ball again. Zane Trace wants to travel there. Timeout, Miami Trace. Been a hectic, hectic fourth quarter. I think it's too little, too late, maybe. Well, seven point lead. I don't know. A little couple threes. Yeah. Full timeout. Either way, are you ready to do an interview after the game? <laughs> we'll see. We're going to throw you into the fire. All right. I'm sure I can drum up some, some questions. I'm sure you can. If not, I'll make it up as I go. All right. So we got Guthrie, Osborne, Guess, Armstrong, and Bodecker for the Panthers, McCullough, Gerald, Ripeth. Houston and Robinson in for the Pioneers. 147 remaining on the clock. Miami Trace basketball. Yes, bringing the ball up for the Panthers. Ooh, a little handsy there. He finds Armstrong on the wing. Gets it down low. Guthrie up and in. Robinson. Finds McCullough. Misses the shot, Bodecker rebounds. A minute five left here in the fourth quarter. Got a foul. Well, it would take three possessions and three threes in order to tie this game up. Guess down to Guthrie, Guthrie to Guess, who finds Armstrong, who thinks about a three. Finds Osborne, Osborne drives, and a foul. Still not to the bonus yet. Nope. So if they're going to foul, they're going to have to foul quickly. Ref blows the whistle here. Yeah. All right, here we go. Ball out to Bodecker. Checks the clock. Finds oh, wide Armstrong open. underneath the hoop. But he, he doesn't, doesn't take it. He does not take the shot. Okay. Next one, no. There's your yeah, foul. there it is. Smart, you know, I understand the thought process there by Armstrong. Right. It's almost a team first mentality. Or it is a team first mentality. And like, I don't want to turn the ball over. That's right. If I miss this shot, they get the ball. We want to milk that clock as much as we can. S sign of good chemistry. Mm -hmm. Osborne to Bodecker. 20 seconds left. You want a foul. Still not to the bonus yet, are we? No, nope, oh, not yet. One more. Osborne with the basketball. 13 seconds left of the game here. Look, he's going to dribble it out here. Four. 
That's the ball game. Miami Trace. Winners tonight over Zane Trace, 55 to 46. Adam Guthrie, 19 points. Good way to get back in the win column for the Panthers after a heartbreaking loss to Circleville. Zane Trace did not go down without a fight, though. Was a uh, valiant effort on the comeback. Was able to get within single digits. Um, just could not close the uh, close the gap. Looks like we're going to get a chance to talk with Coach Brian Southward here. Is he running from you? Okay. Yeah. Might be able to snag a, maybe we can snag a player too. See how it goes, see who comes out of the locker room. have uh, the Miami Trace uh, coach over to talk to us here briefly. We're going to give uh, Cody his his big break in interview. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. So overall, good way to get back in the win column. That's right. And it was a good effort and uh, I was a little concerned there when we opened the second half and we sort of had some deja vu with the scoring, but uh, they settled down and uh, they got back into their uh, first half game. Looks like uh, we get back into FAC play on the ninth. It's Chillicothe, that's a home game. And then on to McLean, a home game, and then Hillsboro, which Hillsboro was a really, their, their first go around was really Tough. Really tough game. Right. Um, the one that kind of jumps out to me here is on the 20th. They traveled to Hilliard Davidson. Which is in Columbus. Yeah. I'm, I have to look into them and see what those guys uh, are doing this year. Um, and then the big one coming in February on the, on the 3rd at Washington. It will be a, an anticipated matchup. Um, the last couple times I've been here, I've seen some courthouse players. On their off night coming in to watch the Panthers. <laughs> I would probably do the same thing. Well, we don't have to worry about him stealing any signs. No, no, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, did you see uh, J.J. McCarthy's latest interview? when? He <laughs> no, no. So, <laughs> so, so are you going to give us your anticipation for Monday night's game? Um, what, against uh, Chill Coffee? Oh no, you're talking. I'm talking, talking football. football. Well, I can tell you this: I want Washington to win. I'm not a not a Michigan guy. Right, I'm not either. <laughs> Even though they're in the Big Ten, any uh, as an Ohio State fan, I think any time they lose, it's a good day. Especially after the last three years, we got a little bit of a sour taste in our mouth. I would say so. Um, 
But it is a it's a good football game. Uh, you know, Michael Penix Jr. is a transfer from Indiana who's played well the last two years for Washington. Um, I believe was a Heisman candidate. Well, yeah. they have a high octane oh, offense. Yeah. Talk about you know getting the ball out in a hurry, and he you know is a left-handed quarterback. He can sling it. It's been a uh, it's been a long and interesting uh, college football season. We'll be ready to watch that game on Monday night. Yeah, I don't see anything else that I'd be doing Monday night that would be no, more important. <laughs> no, I got got some off-season work or preseason work out for, for baseball. A little open gym situation going on. And then uh, I'll go home and settle in and watch a football game. It's like Coach Brian Southward's coming over. All there. right. So I'll give him the headsets, and we'll put him on, and then I'll go collect some cameras while you're talking. <laughs> Stay right Come here. Over, Coach. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> this was a lot better. Uh -huh. Thank God. All right, we're here with Coach Brian Southward for the Miami Trace Panthers. Now, I, Rick didn't warn you. I've never done this before, so I'm uh -oh. going to try my best. <laughs> hey, there's a guy sits in that in red shirt. Yeah, yeah. I'll give I'm, you that. Well, I'm ready for baseball, but. That's neither here nor there. Um, so, Coach, tonight, uh, big win. Um, you know, what was the, the mindset coming into the game tonight? Mindset was just to be as a team, come in, and uh, just come out there and play. I mean, that's what it all is about. Um, yeah, we had a bad game last game. I understand that. Like I said, I, I took the blame on that. We had some good practices. We came in, and we kept our heads focused, and – you know, I told him there's two things you can do. Attitude and effort. That's the only two things you guys can control. You guys control those, we'll go pretty long ways. Okay. Yeah, we, you know, we talk about the, the game from Circleville. You guys kind of struggled coming out of the out of the halftime. And, you know, Rick and I was talking, like, the, I think one of the most important things tonight is that you didn't have that happen again. So I'm assuming the message in the locker room was, to, hey, we need to, you know, get the ball rolling and, and, and kind of go. Um Adam Guthrie had a big game tonight for you. Was able to control the paint. Um, uh, 19 points, I think. Is that was that kind of the mindset? You know, to get him the ball, and let him work. Yes, coming in, that's what the main thing I've always wanted to do was get him the ball. And um, I knew we had a, pr a pretty good size on them tonight. And I know they had their two post players, but being with Adam and we also had May, um, that's where I wanted to get the ball at tonight was underneath, especially early to get the big lead again and just to make the kids more comfortable. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You could tell um, Zane Trace was kind of just leaving one guy on him, and then you basically forced them, like, nope, you're going to have to crash this guy to, to stop him. And they got in a little bit of a foul trouble with a couple of their players, but overall worked out well. Worked out well. Um, looks like we got FAC play coming back um, starting next week. Uh, tough, tough gauntlet of uh, games there. Uh, the one I'm kind of circling before Hillier Davidson is the Hillsboro game. Um, yes. If you kind of want to talk about, you know, the coming games. Well, we got Joel Cothy Tuesday, and they just beat a good Vinton County team, gave them their first loss, I think, a couple of days ago, and I, then all of a sudden they had another Maui, some kind of team. I forget what it was, and um, I thought they would get uh, pretty good with them, but they got beat by 12, and I'm pretty sure it was a lot closer than what that was. Yeah. So they're playing pretty well. And then we got Greenfield on the following Friday, which they just got double overtime against Fenton County, um, scored close to 80. Then the following, I think the game, I think the following Friday, I believe, is Hillsboro. Mm -hmm. They're real, real tough. That That's going to be a battle. Yeah, it was. I, I was able to watch the first game. Tate Davis had a great game, and uh, you got, but you guys were able to kind of shut him down the second half. Um, so I won't keep any more of your time, though, Coach. I appreciate you coming and talking to us, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate yep. it. All right. That was Coach uh, Brian Southward for the Miami Trace Panthers. You're standing in for Coach Ackley. Um, you know, they got a tough road of games ahead. Uh, to jump back into FAC play, uh, they're currently 5-0. and um, Hopefully they're able to, to keep the ball rolling and, um, you know, keep that first place uh, position. I'm not sure where Rick went. He left me here by myself. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's where we're going to close it out. Miami Trace winners tonight over Zane Trace. Um, 
And this is Campus Nation. Cody Snyder signing off, and I'll speak for Rick Phillips. I'm not sure where he went, but uh, we will uh, we'll catch you guys next next time. Thanks. All right, so we want to say good night to everybody. Uh, final score, as you saw there, uh, 55 to 46. Miami Trace over Zane Trace for Campus Nation.